Volpon the Sly Fox by Ben Johnson Characters Summary and Analysis Hello and welcome to the discourse Today we will discuss the most popular and successful play of Ben Johnson Volpon or the Sly Fox was produced in 1605 and it came out in print in 1606 This drama contains the elements of city comedy and beast fable The main characters of this play are related to specific animals to elaborate on the individual nature of the characters in the play We explained the beast fable during our discussion of the Canterbury Tales in which the nun priest tale the story of Chaunty Clear is a beast fable a story in which the animals behave like humans Characters of Volpon The major characters are Volpon a greedy con man who made a big fortune by fooling others Volpon is an Italian word that means the sly fox Mosca or the fly is his servant a parasite Voltor or the vulture is a greedy lawyer Corbasio or the raven is an avaricious old miser man whose son is Bonario Corvino or the carrion crow is a wealthy greedy merchant whose beautiful wife is Celia Other characters include a politic would be a foolish talkative englishman lady would be or the parrot an english woman who almost kills Volpon with her talkativeness and Perry Green a sophisticated english traveler Nano the dwarf, Androgyno the hermaphrodite, and Castron the eunuch are buffoon companions of Volpon. The Avocatori are the judges of Venice. Summary of Volpon: The story is about a rich con man Volpon who has amassed good fortune through his wicked ways. He is not satisfied yet and plans to fool more people to gain more wealth. This time he pretends to be terminally ill at the deathbed. Since he is a childless man with no heir or any close relative he conspires to rob three of his clients with the help of his parasitic servant Mosca the fly The three clients his new targets are Voltor the vulture Corbasio the raven Corvino the crow All these three clients bring precious gifts to impress Volpon in hope of being named as the heir of his immense property in his last will before he dies Lady would be the parrot is also greedy and tries to be the heir of Volpon by impressing him with her gifts and talks The vulture raven and crow represent scavengers waiting for the death of the fox to gain gain from his wealth These are carrion birds however the sly fox is too clever and he has his own plans to devour these scavenger birds The play begins with Volpon's soliloquy in which he worships his gold while Mosca continues to interrupt him with flattering words. Volpon says, "Open the shrine that I may see my saint." He mentions his Almira as the shrine while referring to gold as his saint. Nano, Androgino and Castron appear and present a skit to entertain Volpon. The buffoons go away with the arrival of Voltor. Voltor visits Volpon with an antique gold plate as a gift. He asks Mosca about his chances to be the heir of Volpon. Mosca assures him that he will be named in Volpon's will, who has no close relative. After Voltor, an old miser man Corbasio visits Volpon and presents him with a bag full of gold coins. Mosca assures him too that Volpon will name him as his heir. He further suggests Gorpais Corbasio to disinherit his son and make Voltor his heir. He suggests that this move will further strengthen the trust and respect that Voltor has for Corbasio and he will mention him as the sole heir. Corbasio thinks that there is no harm in doing so as Volpon will die soon and finally his son will get all his wealth and the wealth of Volpon. After Corbasio a greedy merchant Corvino visits Volpon and presents him with a rare diamond and a, an expensive pearl. Mosca again assures him to that he will gain a lot more after the death of Volpon who is terminally ill. After Corvino, Lady would be knocks on the door of Voltor, but Mosca refuses her to enter and says that Volpon is not at home. In private, Mosca and Volpon talk about these three clients whom they have planned to flee away. Mosca informs him about the beautiful wife of Corvino the crow. He praises her beauty in such a manner that fills Volpon with libidinous desire. He decides to see the wife of Corvino whose name is Celia by her own, by his own eyes. 
He disguises himself as Coto the mountebank and goes to the house of Corvino. He pretends to sell an elixir or medicine in front of Corvino's house and gathers a crowd. The crowd attracts Celia's attention and she comes to the window to watch the proceedings. Scoto asks her to drop her handkerchief if she wants to buy the elixir that can cure any kind of pain. Celia throws her handkerchief towards Volpon. Corvino arrives at the same time and furiously disperses the crowd. He pushes Scoto away without realizing that he is Volpon. He then enters his house and takes Celia away from the window and threatens her with incarceration if she tries to go to the window again. Volpon has seen beautiful Celia and he is highly infatuated by her beauty. He asks Mosca to help him steal the wife of Corvino. He sends Mosca to Corvino's house. Mosca meets Corvino and tells him that Volpon's health is getting better and he can be saved with the help of a young woman who may sleep with Volpon to warm his blood. He tells Corvino that the illness has turned Volpon impotent and hence he cannot have sex with any woman but it will save his life. Mosca suggests Corvino make his wife Celia sleep with Volpon to save him. He says that since Volpon cannot have sex with Celia but it will save Volpon's life. Volpon will be indebted to him and will make him his soul higher. Corvino agrees and goes to tell Celia to prepare for a feast at Volpon's house. Volpon is completely mad with lust for Celia. He tells Mosca to use his wealth in any way to woo Celia so that he could enjoy her body. Mosca decides to make good use of this opportunity. He presents a soliloquy in which he suggests how a natural born parasite is better than a learned parasite and praises himself as he believes he is a natural born parasite. He meets Bonario, the son of Corbaccio, in the street and informs him about his father's plan to disinherit him and make Volpon his heir. Bonario is worried but he doesn't trust Mosca. So Mosca tells him to come to the house of Volpon where Mosca will hide him so that he may hear about the plan of his father by his own ears. Volpon is enjoying an entertaining show by his buffoons Nano and Rosino and Castron. Suddenly, Lady Woodby bumps in his house and almost kills him with her immense immature talks. She brings a handmade cap as a present for Volpon. Mosca enters the house and rescues Volpon from Lady Woodby by telling her that her husband's a politic would be was seen on a gold gondola with another woman, his concubine. Lady Woodby is jealous and she decides to check her husband immediately. Mosca hides Bonario in the house at such a place from where he could hear the conversation between Volpon and his father, Corbaccio, who is about to arrive at Volpon's house. However, Corvino arrives with his wife Celia before Corbaccio. He forces Celia to sleep with Volpon. Volpon is lustful. He reveals to Celia that he is completely healthy and wants to have sex with her. Volpon tries to seduce Celia by promising her immense wealth, gold and diamonds. But Celia is an honorable woman and she declines all efforts of Volpon. Ultimately, Volpon decides to rape Celia and attacks her. Bonario was seeing all this and he could not bear any more. He jumps out from his hide and saves Celia and takes her away saying, Lady, let's quit this place, it is the den of villainy. Corbaccio arrives at the same time and Mosca tells Corvino and Corbaccio a false story of how Celia knew Bonario since before and ran away with him. He convinces Corvino and Corbaccio to go behind Bonario and catch him. At the gondola, so politic would be is in conversation with a gentleman peregrine the falcon sir politic discusses the possible ways of becoming rich pretty soon and says that one of the ways is to sell the state of venice to turks lady would be arrives at and she mistakes peregrine as a woman and attacks him in jealousy she realizes her mistake pretty soon and asks for forgiveness but peregrine is too much offended and humiliated he leaves the conversation and goes away while going to take revenge on Sir Woodby. Bonario and Celia go to Avocatory to complain against Volpon and to seek justice for Celia. 
वोल्टोर प्रेजेंट्स द केस अगेंस्ट बोनेरियो कॉर्बिनो अक्यूजेस बोनेरियो एंड सेलिया ऑफ हैविंग एन इलिसिट रिलेशनशिप कोर्बैशियो सपोर्ट्स द एक्यूजेशन लेडी वुड बी आल्सो गिव्स टेस्टिमनी अगेंस्ट सेलिया एंड सेज दैट शी ट्राइड टू सिड्यूस हर हस्बैंड टू व्हेन सेलिया कंप्लेंस दैट वोल्पोन ट्राइड टू रेप हिम एंड बोनेरियो सेव्ड हर वोल्पोन अपीयर्स इन द कोर्ट ऑन अ स्ट्रेचर एंड सेज दैट ही इज इल एंड इंपोर्टेंट and he he turned important because of his illness celia and bonaria are proven liar and they are arrested volpon is now sick of pretending to be sick so he decides to get rid of this pretense volpon decides to declare himself dead and announces mosca as his heir he disguises and sees the proceedings from behind a curtain as the three clients come to the know that volpon declared mosca as his heir before his death they visit mosca and complain to him mosca ridicules voltor corbacio and corvino and shuns them away volpon enjoys the humiliation of his client from behind the curtain after they go away volpon and mosca decide to torment them further and they go behind them in disguise to tease them meanwhile peregrine decides to take his revenge he goes to sir politic would be his house in disguise of a messenger and tells him that his plan of selling venice to turks has been reported and he will soon be arrested so politic panics and to avoid arrest he hides under the shell of a large tortoise kept in his place soon peregrine arrives at his house with three more merchants disguised as law officers they search for sir politic and when he is found under the shell peregrine reveals himself and ridicules sir politic he says that now they are even and leaves sir politic's house sir politic is too much humiliated and he decides to leave venice along with his wife forever volpon in disguise follows voltor and asks him about the recent wealth that he gained as an heir of a wealthy man who died voltor is too sad and he breaks up and goes to the avocatory and confesses that he lied in the previous case of bonario volpon realizes the difficult situation and tells voltor that volpon is still alive voltor immediately takes his confession back and pretends that he was possessed by the devil to make that false statement in front of the avocatory volpon is still in disguise and he thinks about turning himself in and declaring that he is alive when he comes back to his home he finds out that mosca has locked him out of his house and he is the legal heir of all his wealth mosca denies recognizing him he says that he won't let volpon to be alive again unless he agrees to share half of his of his wealth with mosca volpon creates a ruckus and law officers apprehend him before they could take him to the avocatory volpon decides to remove his disguise and reveals that he is alive in the court he reveals all the misdeeds he and mosca did to fleece away the wealth of his four clients the court punishes mosca volpon and his clients volpon loses all his ill gotten wealth and is imprisoned mosca loses his host and is consigned to a slave's gallery corbacio loses his son and his property is given to bonario while corvino loses his wife who goes back to her father with all her dowry the fourth client was lady parrot or lady would be who is back to england with his with her husband corvino is sentenced to be publicly humiliated by wearing a donkey's ear and made to roam in all streets of venice volpon appears to be a funny trickster who tries to trick similar greedy legacy hunters however his intentions become evil when he falls for his lust for celia ultimately he is punished and is imprisoned and made to be actually sick just like he was pretending mosca is a parasite mosca eats up volpon from within he weakens volpon and finally he locks volpon out of his own house inheriting everything including his life he, in- he insists that he will let volpon enjoy a free healthy life again only if volpon agrees to share half his wealth with mosca corvino the crow Corbacio the raven and Voltor the vulture depict their carrion scavenger attitude and finally are punished for their greed the two good characters are Bonario 
which means kind and good tempered and celia which means heavenly so we can see that the names of the characters support their nature of the role in the play ben johnson took inspirations from the classical works of aristophanes in this play the animal imagery used in volpone is the sly fox raven crow vulture parrot and the peregrine falcon so this is it for today we will continue to discuss the works of ben johnson please stay connected with the discourse thanks and regards